Philippians chapter two. Philippians chapter two. I thought it was kind of kind of kind of kind of uh, funny or uh, uh, awesome as well that uh, the the Bible reading at the end uh, uh, when they were worshiping the worship team was worshiping there uh, at the end uh, they read the scripture this is very scripture here <laughs> let this mind be in you that was also in Christ Jesus it was pretty cool it was pretty awesome so everybody was on the on the same page this morning <laughs> and 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 what what God wants to do here in our midst also for those out there on Facebook and out there on the internet uh, we took up the offering. If you desire to give, there's a, a donate button on, on our website. Go to donation. Uh, the donation to our website, reignsofgrace.com. There's a, on the bottom right hand side, you'll see a thing that says donate. Just click on there. It'll take you to a, the, our, uh, a page where you can fill out the, whatever denomination you want, or if you're from Africa or South Africa the, uh, or whatever. Uh, uh, the Kruger or whatever they use over there. I'm sorry, I'm not up to date with, or the peso or United U.S. dollar, whatever the denomination you could put that in there, the amount you want, and it will it will, uh, it will give a, a record of your giving uh, uh, as well as so that at the end of this year you will, you can get uh, uh, credit tax credit. Especially if you live here in the United States, I don't know about the rest of the world how that operates, but you'll still get a, a at the end of the year a a uh, a record of your giving, so you can have say I gave this amount to to so that the to raise the grace that the, so that the kingdom of God may be advanced here and around the world. So uh, that's all my uh, that's my infomercial on on a, on, a, on in a nutshell <laughs> about giving. <coughs> Hallelujah. We're going to begin. I like the very first part of this chapter, but we're going to skip down to uh, uh, verse um, verse 5 here. Verse 5. But just in a nutshell, uh, unity through humility is the very first uh, first part of this, this chapter. Uh, started uh, verse 1 through verse 4. It talks about unity through the bonds of uh, uh, your interaction or your experience with Christ. And that's where unity comes from, is our, our personal interaction uh, uh, with the character of Christ inside of us. And that draws us together, our union, union with Jesus. But if you turn, uh, uh, begin the reading with, excuse me, uh, Philippians chapter 2, verse 5. I'm reading from the New King James Version, New King Jimmy, uh, this morning. It says, oh my gosh, pastor's not reading from the Amplified. Because it's been too loud over, I've been hearing it's been too loud over the, the past couple of weeks. Uh, it's been Amplified. Come on, you can laugh. Uh -huh. No, uh, we're going to read from the New King James Version this morning. <coughs> Hallelujah. Some of you just said, we're thinking, man, the pastor's been out in the snow, his brain's freezing up. <laughs> oh, praise God. <laughs> You're allowed to laugh. In fact, I think that if God uh, had the 11th commandment, it would it'd be thou shalt laugh and have joy in your heart. Hallelujah. <laughs> it's okay to smile. In fact, turn to your neighbor and smile at him. <laughs> glory to god <laughs> see the joy of the lord is our strength and a merry heart work is good like a medicine the book of proverbs tells us hallelujah works better than a medicine joy <laughs> nothing else depression more than joy hallelujah the joy of the lord let this mind let this mind let your mind, let your mind, the mind that's inside of your, inside of you, your thought life, 
Let this mind be in you that was also in Christ Jesus. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word. The word that brings forth life. And we, we just exalt you, Lord God, this morning. Lord, help us, Lord God, to be open to receive your word. And Lord, let your word come forth, Lord God. Like an arrow, Lord God, straight for our hearts, Lord God, to remove the things out of our lives that are binding us, that distract us, that keep us from experiencing you in the fullest level of love. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. <coughs> Excuse me. Let this mind... Be in you that was also in Christ Jesus. He's saying, have the mind of Christ. Let this mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus. When he walked the face of this earth, he did not have what I call a stinking thinking. That causes us to, uh, is detrimental to our health. Spiritually, emotionally, and physically detrimental to our health. What kind of thinking that I'm, uh, I'm, what I'm, I'm talking about? What is Christ talking? Let this mind be in you that was also in Christ Jesus. I'm glad you asked. Turn with me to chapter 4. Chapter 4. And this is what God was, is talking about here. Finally, brother, verse, uh, verse 8, Philippians 4, 8. Very familiar passage of scripture. And beloved, I, I, I challenge you, I, I urge you to put this to memory. Not only memory up here, but memory in your heart. Psalmist David put it this way in Psalm 119, verse 11. It says, your word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against you. That when the thoughts come, I know which thoughts are from God and uh, thoughts are not. And this is the mind of Christ. Finally, brother, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are noble, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, Whatsoever things are of good report, if there is any virtue and anything is, if anything is praiseworthy, meditate on these things. Think on these things. And that's what Jesus did. He had this mind inside of him that was full of the truth. He thought on the truth. He knew the truth and walked in the truth. Even when Jesus was in the wilderness, the desert, just as he was entering into ministry, as we see when, uh, how many remember when John the Baptist baptized Jesus and he went under and he came up in that, and, and he heard a voice from heaven and said, hey, this is, my, this is my son down here. I love him very much. <laughs> he probably didn't say it that way, but you know, hey man, this is my son. I love him very much. You know what I'm saying? That's what he said, and then, then, a, and then the Holy Spirit descended like a dove. You, you remember that? How many remember that? Then where did Jesus, the, it says the Holy Spirit led them to the revival center and, and to the, the Quicken Loans Arena or PPG Plaza or PPG Center or Heinz Field. He led them to Heinz Field, and, and there he had a big revival. No. You know where the Holy Spirit led them to? It was in the wilderness. And then the, and the devil came to tempt him. <laughs> and he had, Jesus had the mind of God. He said, yeah, that's because he's God himself. That ain't affair. He was fully God, but fully man. He was tempted in all the, every way, but he did not sin. He had all kinds of thoughts bombarded against him. You know what? Thoughts that come against you. 
into your mind aren't bad is what we do with those thoughts. So Jesus knew what was true into the fact that he knew the truth because he was a student of the truth, the word of God. Up to the age of 12, he would uh, study the word and then be picked by a rabbi to, to study more underneath of him. So he knew the word. He knew the Torah. He was a student of the word. He was called a rabbi and a teacher. By not only his disciples, but, but even the uh, rabbin, other rabbinical people of the Sanhedrin and other uh, synagogues, he was called rabbi. He knew the word. He knew the truth. In fact, he used the truth when the devil come against him and, his, and whispered in his ear, Hey, Jesus, I know you're hungry. Turn this stone into a loaf of bread. Turn the stone in a bucket of uh, a bucket of Kentucky Fried Chicken, extra crispy. A large stuffed crust pizza with the with Supreme from Pizza Hut. Come on, Jesus! I know you're hungry. <laughs> what did Jesus say? No, it's written. He knew the word of God. He quoted the word of God. He didn't just quote it just because, hey, I think the word of God says this, or wait a minute, I'm going to get my, my tablet or my phone out to you version and, I th and Google this, and oh yeah, this is what the Bible says, devil. No, he knew it from experience. He knew the truth from experience. And that's what God says in this word. In fact, Jesus is the one who says this in John. He says, hey, if you know the truth, the truth will set you free. And the word of God is the truth. You could take it to the bank. It's 100% catchable all the time if it was a check. The word of God. It's the truth. It's not like Wikipedia. Do you know Wikipedia? I, I used to think, oh, that was gold. Oh, man, that's great knowledge. Then I stopped reading his stuff on Wikipedia to give my, some of the information. Because anybody, it's just a uh, wealth of it's an information that anybody can put their two cents in. I didn't know that. So a 12-year-old could write a uh, something in <laughs> on... Uh, 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 astronomy or, or, or something like that. You're like, oh, makes you, makes you wonder, well, I don't think I want to read this stuff. If I'm going to get some information, I'm going to get something from an expert. No better expert to go from is than the person who wrote the book in the first place is the Bible is God himself. He made everything, so... Uh, and he knows everything about anything. So it's the best place for true knowledge and, true, and a true wealth of, of, of spiritual living, of life itself. The Bible tells everything about life. You know, the, especially January now, many people made the New Year's resolutions and, and, and we meet, of course, everybody knows we meet in the East Liverpool campus, we meet in a gym building and, and many, they have Zumba and they have all this stuff going on and they make, some people make resolutions till, till two or three weeks and they're like, I don't know if I want to go with this. Mm, then they start quitting. <laughs> quitting, 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 quitting. But it ain't true, you know, with the Word of God, you, 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 you could take it in and take it in. It's not just something you put in your head and say, okay, it's good. And some people just listen to it. It goes, one part goes in one ear and out the other, you know, like some of the kids. 
you tell them not to eat, uh, touch the cookies before the dinner, and guess what they do? You see them come out with chocolate all over their hands, chocolate chip cookies, chocolate over the mouth and everything. Hey, who ate the cookies? Well, it wasn't me. <laughs> and it's all over them. It's all over their pants and hands. And, and say, come on, I can see the evidence all over you. I thought I told you not to eat the cookies. Hmm, did you? I didn't hear that. You shook your head, yes. We can't be selective hearing when it comes to the Word of God. We got to let it go in and, and just go up from the gray matter in our brains and, and sink deep down in our hearts. Allow it to come alive. I, I love my devotions today. I'm, I'm going through the, the Daniel Plan devotional. It's wonderful. And even though it's about uh, the physical body and transforming your, your physical body, all your physical body transformation comes from the inside of you. That's where transformation of your physical body comes from. Because you could, you, you could do all the things that you want, but if you don't transform your mind and all your emotions, you'll never be motivated to carry you through throughout the years, throughout the, throughout the year. You'll be just like I said with the rest of the people who have made a New Year's resolution to come in here and get fit. But after a month or, or two or three weeks or even a month, you're like, hey man, where, where's so-and-so at? I haven't seen them here. At the gym. Oh yeah, they're they're at the they're at the smorgasbord up there, at the King Buffet. I just seen them up there. They were on their seventh plate. <laughs> it's not it's not bad to eat. It's not bad to have food, but the thing is, the, the bad thing is when food has you, or anything in fact has you. Isn't that what Ephesians chapter uh, ch chapter five says? Five twenty says, "Be ye not filled, uh, be drunk with wine, where is an excess, but be ye filled with the Spirit." That's continuing being filled every single day to overflowing measures. And that first part is not just about drinking wine; it's anything in excess. You keep on indulging yourself in the same old things. It's because of your, out, of your inward self. Come on, I'm in the same place right now. We're, we're all in this uh, uh, physically fit for the kingdom thing. You know, uh, everybody's making New Year's resolution. Don't make a New, Year, New Year's resolution. Uh, resolve that uh, that in your inside of yourself uh, become closer to God and get in the word of God and allow it to transform your life so it becomes a positive effect upon your physical body whatsoever things are true whatsoever things are noble whatsoever things are just whatsoever things are pure Jesus didn't go around uh, uh, having the uh, looking at Cinemax and all kinds of stuff and saying, or looking at the the previews of movies saying, "Oh my God, I want oh, oh, oh myself, I want to see this movie." I heard uh, somebody say, I forget who said it. Oh, Rod Parsley. <coughs> Excuse me, Pastor Rod Parsley from World Harvest Church in Columbus. I love giving credit where credit is due. He said this, and I thought it was kind of, kind of uh, astounding. He said, Christians are only, uh, only ones who go to the movies and pay $10 to have somebody else cuss for them and say derogative things about other people for them. I'm like, uh-oh. <laughs> Guilty. Don't be desensitized by the world, but be 
be sensitized by the Holy Spirit and, his, and, 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 and the Word of God. Whatsoever things are pure. The things that you watch and the things that you look at, just think of it uh, this way. Would Jesus be a feel comfortable sitting right next to me? Which he is right there with you. Would he feel comfortable with what I'm listening to, what I'm watching, where I'm going to? Or would he just excuse himself? Would he feel comfortable with what I'm saying? Whatsoever, thing, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are good report. He thought of the, the good report. He looked past the situation that he was, everything, everybody was going through. He looked past the, 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 the uh, detrimental attitudes that people had that he was hanging around with. That's why he hung around with publicans and sinners, the Bible says. He looked at the potential that they had. There was this mean old guy in the, in the town, and everybody knew him, and, and he was the loneliest person. He was a loner, but he, he, he would get under everybody's skin because he'd be around everybody in this small little town. You know those little towns that everybody and every, anyone knows your business? <laughs> you go to the store. Oh, yeah, hey, I heard you, the so-and-so is going on, with blah, blah, blah. It's like, how do you hear about that? Well, you live in this town. Everybody knows your business. <coughs> Excuse me. Everybody knows your business. So this lady, the, the, this old man, he passed away. So everybody was so, you know, I hate to say so glad that he passed away because they didn't like come in contact with this guy. So this funeral home was, was, was packed during the viewing. The guy had no, no family or anything, so all these people showed up just to pay their last respect and go, Whew. except one old lady. She was the nicest lady in town, and for sure that when she came up to the coffin, the, the, the casket to, to pay her final respects, everybody was sure that she was going to, you know, just say something. Man, I'm glad she, this, this old goat is dead. As she went to the ca casket to pay her final respects, she says, he had a good whistle. He whistled very well. And she walked away. Find something good. That's what God looks for the best in everybody. In fact, that's what Jesus says in, in the love chapter. It's written by Paul. It says, Believe the very best in everyone. You mean that person that gets under my skin? Oh, I can't stand him. You mean that person that just cuts me off? I just want to give them a piece of my mind. Lay on the horn, yes. Think the very best about them. If we think about it this way, this is how Jesus thought of people. He looked at the, their, their potential and see the same thing that they were made in his image, his likeness. He made the very one he was looking at, the very one that was looking at them was the very one who made them at the beginning of, of, of creation. So this is the one I put my image, I created And if we look at them the same way, people are created in the same image of God that we are. 
when we look at people, we should see Jesus. Even if they're not serving him. Even if they're not serving him in, in the proper manner. Even if they have problems in their life. We're to look at them as if we're looking at Jesus. And Jesus will set them free. Trust me. And it's his job to set people free. Sometimes we want to think that we could help people along. And it's our job to think, help people along. You ever know somebody like that? It's my job to meddle in everybody's business and, and make sure I fix their life. <laughs> Lord, help us. <laughs> Lord, help us. If there be anything, any, any virtue, is anything praiseworthy, meditate on these things. Is there anything worthy of praise in, in what you're thinking of? Is there anything, a, a virtuous thing in, in what you're thinking at? Think on these things. And I want to go to one more place. And this is just one verse here, beloved. This whole chapter is, is so great in Philippians chapter 2. Let's go to 2 Corinthians. 2 Corinthians chapter 10. We'll start with verse 3. 2 Corinthians 10, starting with verse 3. For though we walk in the flesh, we walk in this flesh. Everybody knows, we don't have to go through this again, that we are... Uh, we're a spirit, right? We're a spirit. We have a mind and emotions. Mind and heart, our emotions and our thought life. And we live in this tent of <laughs> our body. Though we walk in this flesh, we do not war according to the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. They're not fleshly. They're not worldly, but mighty in God for pulling down strongholds, casting down arguments and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. Bringing every, right here, bringing every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ. To the obedience of Christ. Bringing every thought. Is this of God? And you know it's not of God or whatever because Philippians chapter 4 verse 8. We read the, the uh, prescription or, or the description of proper thoughts. If they don't line up with the word of God even right there. If they're not pure. If you have lustful thoughts coming at you, they're not of God. They're not pure. You have violent thoughts. They're not of God. Because you're not thinking the best about other people. You're thinking of how to bust them up instead of how to help them. <laughs> They're out of God. So we got to cast these thoughts down and say, no, I'm not going to meditate upon them. It's not, it's not something I should be thinking on. But not only doing that, but, but also feeling, not only casting them down. Like that, and say, no, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna go there. But replacing that with something else, replacing that with the word, meditating on the wor uh, uh, word, trying to, uh, well, wait a minute, I'm not gonna go there. I'm not gonna think that. Say, for example, I'm just thinking about if you have thoughts, a uh, 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 lustful thought out there, and, and you say, no, I'm not gonna go there. Psalm 101 says this. And you go to Psalm 101 and you meditate upon what that says. I will behave in my house in a wild, uh, wisely. I will not put a, a perverse thing before my, my heart and my mind. Blah, blah, blah. And it goes on. With the word of God. 
sing, 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 sing music, uh, 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 sing, sing psalms. Starts singing a chorus or hymn or, 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 or praising him. Pray. Do something different. That's according to the word of God. You got to replace these things. What's that old saying? The idle mind is the devil's workshop. So if you have thoughts come in, just 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 go. Mm, I'm gonna empty my mind. Um, and sit in the middle of the room and chant. Mm. No, meditate. Not like that. Not like yoga. But meditate on the Word. Meditate on Him. Focus on Jesus. Casting down these arguments and everything that exalts us, every thought. Because the devil doesn't come at you either with a pitchfork and horns. And he's not a little big red guy comes and... Big scary. Because if he come at you scary, you'd be like, I'm running the other way. I'm not going to get enticed by this. That guy creeps me out. He'll come to you like I brought out before, times past. He'll come to you as a Dairy Queen banana split. Cherries on top, whipped cream. Piled high. All the toppings. Everybody's like, shut up, I'm, I'm hungry, I want lunch. But he puts this little bit of cyanide in it. It looks delicious. But what the extra ingredients he puts in it will kill you. And you don't even know it. What's this stuff? It smells like almonds. Almonds, I love almonds. I don't know what cyanide smells like, but you hear all the time, it smells like almonds. I don't know. But it's a little bit of cyanide would kill you. It looks good. looks like a oh, great banana split. And that's what the devil comes to you as an angel of light, he says. Or for, for us, better illustration would be that banana split with a little bit of cyanide in it. Because if he came to you as a, a, a monster, like a late night movie monster, we definitely know that was something up. Hey, hey, you look pretty cool, you know. No, you'd probably run, you'd be scared. You wouldn't have nothing to do with him. But he comes in enticing ways. So we got to know the Word of God. To spend time with him. You know, that's what Jesus did. He spent time with the Father. He had an intimate relationship with the Father. That's how come he had the mind of Christ, what mind, mind of God when he was here on earth. He had an open, intimate relationship with the Father, filled with the Holy Spirit and filled with the Word of God and all that stuff. He walked with a pure, holy thought life. In his, in his heart, attitudes were great, were, did not ha were pure. The fruit of the Spirit was, was welming up within him, was evident. The love, the peace, the joy, the patience. He didn't get upset when some another another person in a camel come up and cut him off when he was riding the donkey. Hey Peter, did you see that that, that guy who's the camel just cut me off? Can't believe it. 
Wait till we get to the next town. I hope I see him because I'm going to give him a piece of my mind. You know what keep from you giving somebody a piece of your mind is get the mind of Christ. You won't give peace somebody a piece of your mind. And if you do have the mind of Christ, I encourage you to give somebody a piece of your mind because it's the mind of Christ coming through you. Philippians chapter 2 again. And we'll close here. We didn't get very far today in Philippians chapter 2, but this is exactly just what I wanted to to hit on right here. Again, verse 5, Let this mind be in you, which is also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, did not consider robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, taken on the form of a bondservant, and come in the likeness of men, and being found in appearance of man, he humbled himself, and became obedient to the point of death, and even death on the cross. Therefore God also highly exalted him and given him the name which is above every name, that the name of Jesus every knee shall bow and those in heaven and those on earth, those under the earth, and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is the Lord to the glory of God the Father. Humility is another, another thing that we got to be, that, that, that God desires from our life. To go through the low door. To go through the low door. To be laid down lovers of him. He gave himself. God left the. God the son left the throne. Gave up all that majesty and glory and honor. The son. He willingly gave it up for, for all humanity. And came was born. And we celebrated that. December 25th, Christmas, his birth. Humble himself was born a little babe in a manger and became obedient to death, death on the cross. Death on the cross. He did, not, and it just reminds me of Revelation chapter, I believe it's chapter 14, it says, uh, and everybody, we all know this. They have overcome him who the end of the devil by the blood of the lamb and the word of the testimony. Everybody quits right there. But we got to read on the, 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 the little bit more. And they love not their life to the death. That sounds like this. They had the mind of Christ. They had. They're following them. They had the heart of, of the Father, and they walked out through the grace of God. And they didn't care about their lives. They were humbled themselves and just gave the, every thing part of their life to Him. <coughs> the priority number one was seeking first the kingdom of God and all His righteousness. And everything else would be fulfilled in their lives. And that's what happened. They gave their everything. Became obedient to death. Death on the cross. Therefore God also has highly exalted him. And given him the name which is above every name. You've got to go through the low door before God can exalt you. It is him that exalts people. People want to give their own, get their own platform, get their own spotlight. They want to have their own, own YouTube channel and they want to go viral on their videos and they want to become American idols and, and uh, the, the next superstar. What do we bring out uh, of the, of, uh, in, in about the, the star of Bethlehem? It was not some special thing. It was just a star just shown pointing its way to Jesus. And that's what God is looking for in our lives. 
not someone to take preeminence or, or want to have be prideful or arrogant and saying, hey, I want to be seen or I want to make a name for myself. For those out you there in ministry or you're thinking about going into ministry, if you're the only, only thing about ministry is I want to I work myself up to, to make a name for myself, you're going about it the wrong way. Don't even go into the ministry. If you're a man in the ministry for that reason, you're in the ministry for the wrong reason. Because it's not about you. It's not about me. You know, I'm just a mailman. Bringing the, the word of God. Just a person just like anybody else. Pointing the way to Jesus, his salvation, spirit, soul, and body. And, and, and God will give the increase. God will give the increase. God will give the raise up if and when. Because it's all about him. And it says, at the name of Jesus, every, every knee will bow. And every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Every name. Beloved, I com- will conclude with this. Every name. It's not just a, a, a people's names. You know what? Cancer is the name. Fibromyalgia is the name. Arthritis is a name. And Jesus is above those names. He's above every disease. He's above every problem in your life. So let's trust in him. And also the Bible says not only he is, uh, he is, he is above every name because he's seated on the throne. But Ephesus tells us that we too are seated in heavenly places. And the word places is an intellicized in most of your Bibles in Ephesians uh, chapter 1 and 3. It says places, the words intellicized in, in your Bibles is not there in, in the original Greek. So he is seated us with him in heaven. In him. In Jesus. By faith. As we're sitting here in this world. As we're sitting here. As we walk in this world. By faith spiritually. We are with him. And that's a mystery. We are seated with him, fully secure in him. And beloved, that's far above every principality, every power, every name that is named. And when we see ourselves as seated from up there, we see ourselves from a different perspective. It's like I said before, when you're walking in, in, the, in the jungle, you can't see very much because it's dark and the sunlight's not penetrating the trees because the, 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 the plush foliage and snakes are on the ground and all the spiders and stuff, but they're up in the trees too. But if you climb up in the trees, to the top of the canopy, there's a lot of life up there. You see monkeys and birds and, and all kinds of interesting animals. And you go up there, and you, you, you go above the canopy, and you look out, you can see for miles, and you get, you get bask in the sunlight as you're hanging on, of course, <laughs> to the limbs. And you see things from a different perspective. 
and you get a, a, a view of where you're actually at. Unlike as if you were on the bottom. You can't see anything. See, when you're seated with him, you're looking at things from a different perspective, a higher perspective. How many has ever flown on a plane before? Wave at me. How many has ever looked out and you've seen the cars down there? You know, you know how they look like? They look like little matchbox cars, the little ants. But if you're running on the ground, they're big. Semi-trucks, they're big. Problems look big. Mountains look big. Storms, everything looks big. Obstacles look big in your life from, from the ground. As you're facing them face to face. But when you're looking in for perspective where you're seated in heaven with him, you're looking down and it looks like and appears like you do when you look out the, the airplane window. And those mountains, those problems and everything doesn't look that big anymore. Because you see it from the same perspective as Jesus does. Because you're safe with him right there. And that's what you are in life. Heavenly Father, thank you for this day. Jesus, I just asked you to come and breathe life uh, into the revelation that you've given to us, Lord God, today. To have the mind of Christ. <laughs> to cast down every thought that's not as contrary to your word that comes against our lives. And that you have authority and power over everything on the face of this earth in the universe, man, of that fact, to include our lives and the distractions and obstacles and, and the diseases and everything that come against us. You have total control. And Lord, help us to receive that revelation of, that, uh, of the higher perspective uh, of where we are seated at with you on, around the throne and that perspective will cause us to see and walk all over the enemy of our life. And help us to go to the other side as you called us to go with you. Help us to finish the race. And fully walk and embrace our destiny and walk fully in it. In Jesus' name. Lord, I pray a blessing on everyone here. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. May the Lord cause his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord lift his countenance upon you and grant you his peace. There's shalom, nothing broken, nothing lacking. In the name of Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Savior. And everyone said, Amen and Amen.